Hello, hello, and welcome back to In Case of Emergency. We are we are doing things, right? We were just, what we just had that scene with Cedric, that's the name, and we're going to have fun times, right? It's still a half-formed thing and nebulous and only ex uh, existing in that funny, a short temp, short-term memory space where you do math in your head. You need to get to the Boskins before you forget. You'll work out the details on the way. Where are you going? You nearly crash into Luke in the doorway at the tavern. Hey! You figured it out. Oh, uh, come on! I thought we were done for today. Luke sighs and pinches his brow, but there's no time to wait. Someone grabs him by the back of his shirt and drags him along the cobblestone road. Not oh, really just getting getting there, aren't we? Uh, the crickets, uh, the crickets are chirping when you arrive. The paved road up to the Boskian Manor ends with, ends in a heavy wrought iron gate, and black bars twisting into sharp spikes at the top. The guards, after some convincing and name dropping, reluctantly lead you to the bo Lord Boskin's room, and uh, and rap on the door. Okay. Uh, there's a shuffling from the other side. <laughs> One moment. You're still here? Okay. Electra opens the door, dressed like she's gotten in uh, from a day outside, or maybe like she's just about to head out. Her eyes widen when she sees you. I know what happened! <laughs> Your father. I, I think I know what happened to him. Uh, Electra blanch blanches. I suppose this is a conversation we should have in private. She nods to the guards, who shuffle reluctantly in place, hesitant to vacate the area. It takes another stern look before they uh, march down the stairs, and Electra closes the heavy wooden door behind them with a click. The room is just as you left it, though a window has been cracked to let the cool air let in the cool night air. The drapes move gently in the wind. Lord Boskin's breathing shallows shallowly and breathes shallowly in bed the rise and fall of his chest barely perceptible you want to talk about what happened to my father yes but uh, where's alzurin uh you kind of uh, needed her for this you clever reveal your clever reveal hinges on it in the meantime you can buy time by pack by pacing back and forth across the uh thick carpet uh, tapping your chin in lieu of poking a pipe toking Poking a pipe. Ally? Uh, uh, Ally, what does she have to do with anything? Aha! She walked right into your trap. Why? She has everything to do with this. After all, she's hiding. In the armoire! Here! You cross the bed and uh, flip around the uh, door to the armoire. Dust, more dust, and Alzurin, uh, pressed into the corner, filled with uh, spare drapery, uh, coughing into her elbow. In the moonlight, uh, you're uh, sure you see it. There's a spray of blood when she coughs. Electra moves to intercept you, uh, pacing, uh, placing herself between you and the closet. What do you want with her? See for yourself. Have a look. Electra regards you uh, suspiciously before turning around. It takes her a moment to ascertain what's happening as Alzurin pulls her sleeve towards her chest, uh, When, uh, but then it hits her. Ali, what happened? She rushes to her side, wrapping an arm around Alzurin's shoulder. She holds her close, it gently wipes the blood from her lips. You're not well. I, I should have done something. We should have gotten help. I, I promise, I'm fine. Her protests are interrupted by another bout of coughing. Electra holds her close, rocking her against her chest. Uh, Cedric winces in sympathy. OS watches the proceedings with a somber expression. You shake your head to push him out of your mind. All right, it's uh, time to see if your hypothesis is correct. Uh, you've been sick all day. You probably felt tired in the beginning, then worse and worse, and then you started coughing blood. Sounds familiar? You look over at Cedric in the back uh, to back you up. 
the same thing happened to me. Ever since I equipped the Boskin sword I recovered ages ago, I was wearing it today for the first time. It was cursed. It was making me sick. So the question is, what's making Ali uh, the same kind of sick? Electra stares at you in disbelief, uh, helping um, Ali to her feet. The ring! You remember being punched at the dock, the hard metal that collided with your jaw. Ali, can you take off your glove? You figure you're on a, a nickname basis by now, considering you're about to save her life. What? You punched me earlier. You were wearing something underneath your glove. Ali stares at you, unmoving. Her eyes flicker to Electra's, then back. You sigh. I promise I'm not trying- I'm trying to help you out here. Ali, if he's right. Ali narrows her eyes in distrust, but reluctantly peels about both her- both gloves from her hands. Sure enough, there's a ring at the base of her right finger. Her right ring finger. <clears throat> Where did you get that ring? I gave it to her. As a promise. Their faces are red. Their eyes instantly dart towards Wes. He catches her uh, eye momentarily, then turns towards the curtains. I'd love her. I would never try to hurt her. The ring belonged to my father, but it would have been mine eventually. I would rather it went to someone I cared about. Where did you get it? I told you, I took it off my father's ring la finger last night. I thought he was just asleep. I swear. Right, right. Uh, what about uh, before that? Electra frowns. This is the one heirloom we recovered from the family tomb a few years ago. The same place where Cedric found the sword. She gasps. <laughs> That's what's causing her to be sick. Take it off, and she'll be fine. You hope you sound more confident than you feel, if you're wrong about this. Electra quickly uh, wiggles the ring off of the other woman, uh, tossing it to her feet before grasping Allie's hand with both of her own. Allie br blinks a few times as though a fog had lifted from her. Uh, her voice is still raspy, but she manages. I... I feel a little better. Electra laughs in disbelief, pulling her close for a hug as she peppers her with kisses against her nose and forehead. Allie scrunches up her face as she tries to hold back a smile. But my father, he wore the ring ever since we recovered it. He's never fallen ill. You nod. Not until you took it off. It was preventing him from getting sick, because he's part of the family. It must curse any outsider. So, all those nights he uh, drank hemlock, he really was being protected by the Boskin's blood. It's uh, my fault for taking the ring off him. I poisoned him. Electra heaves a heavy sigh. You catch Allie squeezing her shoulder. You can't help but think of her own father in the moment. Maybe if uh, you'd spend more time with him. It's not your fault. This isn't your fault. You couldn't have known that he'd get sick. If I'd known. I know. So what now? If I put the ring back on my father, he'll be alright? <sighs> we think so. It should, uh, it should start taking effect immediately. If you're going to leave, now would be the time to say goodbye. Electra hesitates, uh, bending to the ground to pick up the ring. She turns it over in her the palm of her hand as she stares at it. If you want, we'll take the ring. We'll give you two a chance to run before we take it back. Put it back on. That is what that said. But then I won't be able to speak to him before we leave. Do you want to? Electra chews her uh, bottom lip in thought. I heard the last time you talked to him. You changed your mind about running away. He's not going to die, Electra. You can write to him once uh, we're far away from here. But if you don't make up your mind quickly, he is going to die. Hmm. I mean... Hmm. There's no point sticking around if, it's o if it, it'll only make her unhappy. You should get out of here. We'll take care of the ring. We won't tell anyone where you've gone. Electra nods as she presses the ring to her, into, her hand, into your hand. 
Uh, Allie shoots you a grateful look as she leads Electra by the arm. <sighs> Let's go. The two of them escape out the window of the room, scaling the trestle uh, that leans against the wall. You watch them disappear into the horizon before settling into the spot of Lord Boskin's bed. Well, here goes nothing. Sliding the ring onto her finger, uh, you're, uh, you hear her form... Here, his form inhale. That is what this says. His breathing begins to settle into a steady, healthy rhythm, his eyes fluttering. Hi, Lord Bosca. Funny story. No portrait. Okay, that's fine. He was a bit player anyway. After a long night of daring escapades, you finally retire to your room. The bed is hard. It's the exact stiffness of the vinyl... Vinyl... A mattress in your dorm, which is oddly comforting. You're so exhausted, your bones so weary that it would be impossible not to fall asleep immediately once you get under the under the covers. It would be impossible to stay up any longer than you already have. You've been running around all day. You're tired. Too tired for your thoughts that keep you awake. Like, what's up with Wes? And what's up with you and Wes? Are you guys together? Were you ever a thing? You feel like you've broken up without ever having a, having had a real relationship. In fact, you know you haven't uh, uh, thought about it in a while. Wouldn't it be a true feat of endurance to stay up thinking about dad right now? It would take immense willpower to replay all your greatest hits. Like, how's school, Kyron? Fine. How are your classes? I don't know. I'm doing fine in them. Okay. Uh, they're not hard. Uh, no. Keep an eye out for your, uh, uh, school's career fair. A lot of them were held early in the fall, if you want a summer internship. I yeah, okay, Dad. It's not like any of them would hire me anyway. Whoa, oh, that's real. <laughs> oh, why not? I told you, it's the major GPA that's important. No, it's not that. The job market's not what it is, Dad. Even the entry-level positions are looking for several years' experience. It's not enough to be uh, just to get good grades anymore. Uh, never mind, you wouldn't get it. Well, I would hire you. That's because you're my dad. Even I wouldn't hire me. You remember this conversation every day for the past two months. You were staring. You were starting to forget when you first came to uh, Peregrim, but now the memories are back again with suffocating intensity. That's like 70 days in a row. That has to be some kind of record, right? Is it normal to feel like you're drowning in memories of people that don't exist? Hey, everything cool between us. I'm just afraid of commitment, and that makes me uh, hurt other people as a result. We should, uh, make out again. You're not sure what the point of coming down here is if you can't escape your own head. Are you going to get out of there? Are you even supposed to? You wish there was someone to tell you what to do. <laughs> but what even is real? You're drawing, um, arbitrary dis uh, distinctions between different kinds of experiences. Cloister? Wait. Cloistered scholar. Indeed. You cannot count on your own eyes to reveal truths about the universe. We might indeed turn to the written uh, text, uh, to these great scholars who came before us. Yeah, like, read a book or something. Of course, one may also, wait, one may also to seek to write, to teach, to pray. Pray? For who knows all but God himself? What is knowledge but our divine reward for parsing what he has set forth, be forth before us? Where lies the uh, divine, if not to the cha chast? Uh, pursuit of a pure love. Surely God is to be found in the face of a fair maiden or a beautiful poem. Not within the uh, dour tomes of your... Love. How much could men of wor could men of words know about love? It is our deeds of honor that speak to the strength of feeling. 
Do not entertain the lies of such dullards. Uh, their words are poison, first and foremost to themselves, but also to men of learning, such as I, and and you. Well, I've spelled that. For men of parchment and ink, our task on this earth are those of humility and service, not foolhardy. Is this not euphoric? Who? No, wait. Uh, before we go any further, I have another question. Are any of you guys okay with gay people? No. I feel like... Uh, hand stuff, uh, oh. No, I agree. I think a little hand stuff with the homies is okay. What in the world are you talking about? You know, the Greeks. Well, what the hell am I uh, doing here then? Do I even belong here? Maybe if we could fantasize about a medieval past that was less uh, heteronormative. Did Alan Turning be, uh, uh, belong in the middle century? <laughs> you don't belong anywhere. You just have to get used to that. Chiron, go to sleep. Um. <laughs> yeah. I'm 13. I don't have a bedtime. I'm a grown up now. You can't make me go to sleep. You can go to sleep, or you can help me wash the dishes. <sighs> Good night. That's what I thought. Do you have anything packed for school tomorrow? It's going to be your first day of high school. Yeah, I know. I don't have to, like... Uh, you don't have to, like, narrate my life. I know what's going to happen. Okay. I packed you lunch. It's in the fridge. <sighs> When's mom coming back? You liked her food better? Not really. She can't cook either. Yeah, well, I guess I got that from her. She won't be back until I leave for college, so you're going to have to stay with Dad until then. <laughs> but who's going to do the dishes in the meantime? I'm sure you'll figure something out. We all have to grow up at some point. I'm already a grown-up. I already have. If you say so. Don't forget to do the dishes when I'm gone, okay? Good night, Chiron. Oh. Good night. <laughs> uh, the morning comes too quickly. Uh, the uh, sun has already crested the horizon by the time you roll yourself out of your stiff covers. Downstairs, the rest of your party is already packed and ready to go. Wes stands across the room for you, deliberately avoiding eye contact. Wes! Good morning. We all slept well last night, I trust. Everyone grumbles something without much enthusiasm. You're running on about 20... You're running on uh, hour 24 of your road trip. Uh, when most of your uh, initial novelty has already worn off, and now you're trapped in a car with people you're not sure you ever liked in the first place. <laughs> uh, Luca adjusts his arms, where you spot a, a book tucked under it. He must have found something last night. As you head out into the city, you see that the bridge has a. Uh, the bridge that turns over the river has been lowered since last night. A line of merchants has already formed. Uh, people uh, jostle to uh, get their goods moving out of the city and back onto the road. You want you wonder if they uh, know about the impending apocalypse. The five of you come to a standstill at the very back of the line of the city, the line out of the city. Uh, Remus sighs as he surveys the wagons towering the towering with sacks and crates. Oh, I don't like doing this. He straightens, rolling his shoulders back as he reaches for his crown and gently lifts it from his head. Ahem. Uh, he head, uh, the heads of the crowd turn in unison and murmur begins to rise from the crowd. Uh, that's the king! What is he doing here? One man gets to his knees and fully prostrates himself. 
Remus jerks his head towards the um, other end of the bridge, uh, motioning for the party to follow him. He slips easily through the crowd, uh, the people parting uh, around him like water. Uh, excuse me. You make short work of the bridge until you escape back onto the dirt road. Ahead of you lies a wooded valley, and past it, uh, the uh, slate-gray outline of the mountain range of the horizon. A grim Mountain. We uh, make for a... Uh, uh, wait. We make for a month that leads to the cave. Mouth. Not month. Mouth. Mouth. Uh, of the caves inside, the heart lies in the mountain center. Thanks for your work last night. We can circumvent our former obstacles entirely. It's just through this forest now. Let us make haste. We may yet be early to the end of the world. Remus marches down the dirt road with a pep in his step, having apparently recovered from his disappointment from earlier. Luke gives you an amused look, like he's the only, like he's the one actually babysitting you all. All right, I'm gonna end the part here, so I'll see you around, everyone.